So exactly this time four years ago, we'd not long got the keys to our first house and I had to learn absolutely loads of DIY for the first time, like patch plastering, filling walls, painting, things I'd never done before, but it was all good fun. But it's now time to do it all over again. And I thought I'd just take the time to tell you about the story of this room, because this used to be the living room. We've got a chimney breast here, but we then moved the living room behind here so we could open up the kitchen because it was really tiny. And I can tell you it was the last time ever that I did DIY in a dress. So uh, yeah, not look back and just went for scruffs. So if you want to see how I do basic wall filling, painting, and my cool wall feature here, then keep on watching. But next week, I'll be starting to show you how I hang a door, fit an electric fireplace, and fit some coving as well. So keep on watching. So the first thing I did was completely empty this room. And here's how to not cover a fireplace. And that's using a scrap piece of plasterboard. And originally I wanted just to stud it, block it up because it's a bedroom, but my fiance still wanted a fire in there. So in the end, I just went with it with a cozy looking electric fire. Plus it's something that anyone can take out and put it back as a living room. The other thing I've got to work out fixing is to cover up this hole, which used to be blocked off with a cupboard. And I'll definitely be getting a plumber to move some pipes and fit a vertical radiator for us. And here's the most unattractive wardrobe in the world, a runner rail. And I counted, I had about 21 drawers as well as this. So I took the opportunity to clear a lot of stuff out and take things to the charity shop. So out came the bay window curtain rail because it took up too much room when you close the curtains. And now I'm taking everything off the walls, like my DIY headboard, which will be going upstairs instead, and any fixing brackets or raw plugs. And now for choosing colour, since last year I've been using a Dulux Visualizer app, it's brilliant. So I used some test pots here, but I noticed that I had to paint white first to get the true colour. So you can see the first two colours here are the same pink, but they don't look it. And I also tested in different parts of the room where the light would shine. And finally I have a new purpose for my sawhorses, and we plonked the old door on there to use as a table. But I personally wouldn't do this again, because when you're sanding the walls later, it goes all through the house. So that is a lesson learnt. Oh, and you'll be pleased to know I now have less dangerous step ladders. So now I'm going to wash the walls ready to paint them. So I'm using a bucket and some sugar soap and a sponge and just following the back of the bottle. And you'll notice I don't fill walls first. I wasted hours filling. So my trick is to paint everything white first. And that's because some holes and dints don't show up by the time you've painted them. So while I did that, my fiance painted the ceiling with Leyland's white matte emulsion. As usual, I'll leave all the links below to save you having to search for them. So now it's my turn to paint all the walls white. And I thought I'd use a little trick for the first time that I saw on Mano Mano's Facebook page. And that is to line a paint tray with cling film or tin foil, just to save scrubbing later. Or you can buy those plastic liners instead. It worked quite well. It wasn't foolproof, but at least it's saved on washing later. Alright. So once that dried, it was time to move on to any holes in the wall. And for such small ones, I wouldn't normally bother with the PVA solution, but I thought, why not? But I do find this really useful for any areas where the paint's not sticking to plaster. And then after leaving it to dry, I just fill them with some cheap filler. I don't go for polycells filler anymore because it's quite expensive and it's not always that easy to sand without damaging the rest of the wall around it. So again, leave that to dry. And I'm also wearing a mask because I wanted to sand the rest of the walls, just very lightly to get rid of any protruding bits. And make sure your windows are open as well. And after a while, I thought, let's just upgrade to the hand sander on a fine grit. This definitely speeds it up, but sometimes it can be a bit too abrasive and you've got less control over it. Then I add another coat of white, and that's because this paint is so much cheaper than the good stuff. So we're now on a new day, and I'm so much happier already that it's such a bright room. Hello, then for the first colour I wanted to use, I picked Blush Pink by Dulux's Easy Care range. And it's very important to us that it's matte and it's washable. And I've used quite a few different rollers in the past, and now I know that I prefer a woolly one, so we can give some nice texture to any flawed walls. And instead of cutting a room first, which means going around the edges with a paintbrush, I just prefer to do that after this stage. I think it's because I'm too excited, I want to see what a colour looks like on my wall. And to hide any textures, I've got a roller on the other hand, and I just go over it. 
It's also a good idea to turn off the electrics as well, particularly if you're washing any walls or painting and you might want to masking tape it up, but I usually just use a paint scraper after. I also had to do this particular wall well in advance because I was having a radiator fitted there. Then I didn't have to any awkwardness of trying to get behind it. I'm sure this saved me so much hassle. But before I go on to my next colour, I knew I wanted a wall circle feature on the chimney breast so it would really dress up some floating wall shelves that I've got planned. So I made sure I painted my pink on there first. I painted more than I actually needed because I hadn't decided on the size of it yet and then left that to dry for at least 24 hours. So I'll show you how I do my circle shortly. Then onto one of my least favourite parts and that is to frog tape the corner of a wall so I can paint a contrasting colour. I've just had so many experiences where even low tack masking tape takes off the paint that you want to keep. And this is no exception, but after watching a load of YouTube videos, this one in particular shouldn't have any bleed through. But apparently if you use a hairdryer on it, it shouldn't take it off. Oh, doesn't work. But frog tape have since told me that it's better to leave the paint to cure for up to 30 days. Another point that's worth mentioning is that I went for the lightest colour first, so if I painted a dark colour over the top of any mishaps, it wouldn't show through. But patching it up isn't that hard, it just adds a little bit more time and effort. And if any paint came off and left a bit of a chip mark, I'd go over it with some filler, sand it, and then paint over it. And I use my Wagner's plastic paint guard for this, but you could use cardboard instead. Now onto my wall feature. I was quite nervous about this because I really didn't want any bleed through or paint ripping. And the first thing I did was measure the height of where my wardrobe would go and make a pencil marking. Because I thought it'd be nice for the top of my circle to sort of be in line. It doesn't have to be bang on. But I definitely needed to get the center point right. So I measured that, divided it in half and marked it up. And now I'm getting an idea of the height and the width of a circle to see where I'd want it and I preferred 45 centimetres. And I'd actually got this inspiration online but I couldn't find a way to get it an exact circle so I decided to do it my way and that was to hammer a picture hook dead centre with the string trapped between the wall and the hook so it could just swing around perfectly. And then ignoring the blurry camera but you get the gist, I just drew a full circle and I kept it careful and steady going all the way around trying not to stop. I did make a boo-boo on the bottom left because the pencil jumped and anywhere that I'd accidentally doubled up the pencil markings, I just wiped off. And then using frog tape again, I masking tape inside that pencil line. And I made sure I did this really slow and carefully because I didn't want it uneven. And I made sure it was in one continuous strip because I'd seen loads online where people had stopped and started. And the circle had so many edges to it that I didn't want. And now I'm just using a rubber just to wipe away those marks. And I also rubbed around the whole edge of it as well, just to definitely make sure there were no bleed through coming through. And for good measure, I just went very lightly. I didn't fully load the brush and went around the whole outside edge and carried on painting as normal. So after two coats, my gut instinct for this one was to not leave the paint to fully dry. I just couldn't take that risk. So I very slowly pulled the tape away. Oh, I'm happy, I'm happy. Shush, baby. And I tried various techniques to avoid any tear out. Tiny bit, I can touch that up. I did get a little bit, but that was the least of my worries. But then I found this technique for me was the best by rubbing the tape away, pressing my finger down. But definitely do this as slowly as you possibly can. So now a little bit more PVA solution and I wiped any excess off and just left it to dry. And while I'm here, I'm just filling in that hole I made dead center. And a few hours later, I used a kiddies paintbrush, a little bit like a makeup brush actually, and just filled the patches. And thankfully, the tape had left a lip of paint, so it was even easier to keep the paint within the circle. So now the bit I'm not so keen on is painting the skirting boards and the windowsills. Oh, and I forgot to say, we are definitely not keeping this carpet. If you want to keep your carpet, make sure it's covered. So I'm pulling it back so I can get access to the skirting boards easier. I tried to go around the whole lot with my hand sander just to key the paint before I paint it again. 
and I bought this one about this time last year and already the velcro pad had had it and the sanding pads kept coming off every meter so with a stroke of luck Mano Mano had sent me this Dewalt multi-tool for a future project and luckily it turned up this day and it had sanding attachments as well and I know a lot of you have been sissing on that I should get one of these so a huge thanks to Mano Mano for saving my bacon I'll leave a link to this below if you want to check it out but I really needed this to cut up some skirting board next week for my electric fire and so far I can tell you it's a powerful beast and it was particularly fun to do a whole windowsill in one go so after cleaning all the sandy dust away I got out some old satin wood one coat that I had it definitely needs more than one coat but I know this is much cheaper than most high street shops and because I didn't want to catch any of the walls instead of using frog tape I just used this paint guard again but I kept having to wipe the excess on my leg so I didn't accidentally get it anywhere and then gently sanded everywhere with the finest sandpaper I had and repeated the whole thing again. But for any areas I had gaps missing, like the skirting board where the radiator used to be, I had to fill with some decorator's cork and wiped any excess off with a wet finger. 